going on guys welcome back to the channel so in this video i'm going to go over the top five things i dislike about my fadm3 first i want to start off with the word hate or dislike is a strong word i would say i wish bmw improved on this and we're going to go into that we're going to deep dive into that first on my list of the things i did not like about the fadm3 was definitely the way it sounded. So I'm sure this topic has gone over many times and I've done a couple of videos of why it doesn't sound good. But obviously that was one of the first things I noticed about the car that I did not like. When you buy an M3 or M4 or even the M2C, which is M2 competition, when you buy a car like that, you want it to sound stout. You do want it to sound aggressive. Starting up the stock, F8X or even the M3, I was pretty underwhelmed with it. It didn't sound appealing to me. It didn't sound stout. It sounded kind of like embarrassing a little bit. When you buy a car like this, and you spend a decent amount of money on it, you want it to sound like a sports car. When you first get a stock M3, M4, sorry, railroad tracks, but when you first buy an M3, M4, you want it to sound aggressive. You definitely want it to sound like it's a sports car. Uh, a stock M3, stock M4, stock M2, M2 competition at least. Uh, it just sounds underwhelming. Um, it doesn't sound something that speaks sports car. Obviously, it does sound a little bit louder when you start up compared to a, a 3 Series, but a lot of people have compared this exhaust note with the stock exhaust, stock mid pipe to a lawnmower. And I can kind of agree to that. And going back to the way it sounded like a lawnmower, there's another downfall about it. So this is farting noise, right? So this farting noise has been said many times before by many different people. And one of the notable people I remember hearing this from was Obsessed Garage, Matt Mormon. And I'll do a little poll right now. That little uh, noise in the, in the when I let go of the gas. So as you heard, as I let go of the throttle, you can kind of hear that high pitch I guess you could describe it as farting noise, but it doesn't sound that good. If you guys have been watching this channel for a little bit, you definitely see that there's a lot of different fixes for that, you know, sound issue. If you guys have seen the other episode where I went to Active Auto Work on multiple occasions where we compared the equal length mid pipe on what it really does to amplify and change the tone of this exhaust node. If you guys haven't heard it in person, you guys are missing out. If you guys own an M3, M4, or even M2 competition, uh, this does a lot of justice to your car on making sure that the car does sound uh, where it needs to be. Going back into the way it sounds, check this out. That last portion when I'm letting go of the throttle, you can kind of hear like a farting noise. Every time I do a pull, I do notice that noise. That's one of the things I, I don't really like about the car. I know it helps with the power delivery and also um, many different other things that you guys can let me know in the comments too. But those are the things I didn't like about the car initially. I think where a lot of people got kind of spoiled was if they came from the E9X platform. So coming from the E9X platform, uh, just throwing on an, a simple exhaust, whether it's an axle back um, or just doing an exhaust modification, that car just sounds incredibly beautiful. You know, it's just something that me personally, and then later on in the future, I do want to add one of those into uh, the garage. I know they are appreciating a lot because nowadays to find a clean one is pretty much uh, a rare find, especially with the used car market going on right now. Second on my list of the things I did not like about my F80 M3, being a car that's twin turbo, over 400 horsepower, I was expecting to hear a little bit more of the induction noise or even uh, the intakes or even the turbos. I didn't hear any of that. It was kind of like difficult to hear. And for a car that boasts over 400 horsepower and being twin turbo, that was something that I wasn't hearing when I first got the car stock. Obviously, all these little different problems, there's solutions to it. I do want to mention a lot of these things that I'm saying that I dislike or hate or wasn't a big fan of. A lot of these things I'm saying could be adjusted or, or fixed by adding aftermarket parts. 
So not being able to hear the turbos or intake or, or something that makes it seem like it's a sports car was definitely a good fix. The good fix was adding my aftermarket uh, intakes. If you guys haven't seen that video, I added um, Eventury intakes. And before that, um, I had Dynan intakes, which I got it for a solid deal. And then I ultimately, me personally, I've always wanted Eventury intakes. Um, I, I personally think it's the creme of the creme of intakes high quality and I will say the amount of noise that comes out of those intakes or the way it amplifies the driving experience is, is, is by far one of the best intake system that you could get. Sure it's not the most cheapest intake system uh, but it is aesthetically appealing and it, it just sounds amazing. Alright going into third on my list of the things I did not like about my F80 uh, M3. So when you put the car into Sport Plus, this is what I've noticed and I've heard this many times before from other owners, is that the throttle becomes extremely sensitive where you can't just lightly tap it. You kind of have to find a fine line on um, getting onto the throttle and getting off the clutch if you have a six-speed manual. And it, it, sometimes I've seen it where it, it gets you in a jerking motion where uh, it bobs back and forth so at that point you would have to let go of the throttle and then gradually get back onto it where it's it's uh, a happy medium so I'm going to demonstrate for you guys um, exactly what goes on when you um, don't engage the throttle properly on Sport Plus and that was one of the things I didn't like about it and that was one of the things it kept me away from Sport Plus um, when I first got the car at least with the, a manual system like what I have you kind of have to find the fine line between, you know, giving enough clutch and giving enough gas and not having that jerking motion, which like I said, I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys and hopefully I don't look like a fool in these streets. All right, so I'm coming to a stop sign. I'm gonna throw it into first and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when I'm, when I'm, when I'm what I was talking about. <laughs> that is exactly what happens when you're, you're giving it lightly on the throttle or you're not giving a throttle it it just gets you in the jerking motion which kind of gets uncomfortable and it kind of makes you like a fool when you got passengers in the car but over time that type of uh, driving you'll get used to um, you just got to get behind the wheel and kind of like find where your happy medium is but as you saw I'm kind of like a freaking idiot my list of the things I not like about my F80 M3 was comparing this interior. This interior uh, when compared to like an Audi S4 or a Mercedes uh, C63, uh, they're pretty much generally on the same ballpark when, they, when you guys compare it. Those interiors on the S4 or the Mercedes C63 just blows the M3 out of the water or, or this platform out of the water. A lot of the interior parts that kind of make it a little bit different than the 3 Series because this is pretty much a 3 Series on steroids and, and it's not a 3 Series itself, it is M3. But looking into some of the parts are very similar. So if you get a 335 uh, at the time M Sport package, you get the same steering wheel. It's pretty much not, nothing different than that. Um, the only thing that's really much different in this interior compared to a 3 Series so obviously the seats, the rear seats, the steering wheel, it's pretty much the same. The carbon fiber uh, bits that's on the center console and also on the dash. But everything else is pretty much the same comparing to the center console here with all the buttons, uh, the heads up screen right over here, or your uh, navigation screen, or your iDrive control. Um, all that's pretty much the same. So going into the M3, that was one of the things I was kind of disappointed about. Obviously, these seats are very, uh, you know, gorgeous looking. Uh, they're very comfortable. But when you compare it to another brand like the Audis or, or Mercedes, um, it, this interior doesn't really compete with that. I know with the new G80 or G8X platform, their interior has stepped up by far. I know uh, their research team has probably been listening to a lot of the previous owners of M3s, M4s. So I'm glad that BMW is actually listening to that and also competing with these other brands because that was one of the things I was really disappointed about. 
Another thing I wanted to bring up too is that now I'm going to drive because you'll be able to hear it more. The interior moldings, uh, the silicone that's in the doors and, and all these things, they make noises. You can kind of hear it probably. As I'm turning, I'm just going to drive and I'll let you guys hear it. I'm going to put the exhaust on the valves closed. But you could definitely hear it when you go up a driveway or go, you know, come across a steep driveway. You can kind of hear the moldings kind of like cr crinkle and crack. I'm hoping you guys can hear that. So those are the some things I was talking about where if I'm driving, um, a lot of times I have my valves open so I don't really hear it too much or I have music that's in the car. So that's one thing that was kind of annoying. So hearing those, the moldings where it kind of makes noise, it kind of took away from you know buying an expensive car like this. Um, I know that there is a fix for that. There is a Teflon tape or whatever type of tape you could put on the door sills that kind of minimizes it and maybe gets rid of the noise. I know there's other products you could put where you could kind of um, uh, throw a lubrication on these sills where it kind of minimizes the noise too. But for a car that's not really that old to have that issue where it, it, it takes away from the, the driving experience, it, that was one of the things I definitely didn't like about uh, this car. Next on my list of the things I did not like about my F80 M3 was I know a few years ago, I know when this issue was prominent in the forums and everything uh, was the crank up. The crank up issue was something that got a lot of people nervous about driving their F80 M3s. I know I was one of them where I was kind of nervous if the, the crank hub was going to fail on me and blow my motor. But come to think about it, it doesn't really happen way too often. Uh, it's something that gets blown over for portion and if my car is pretty much stock. I have stock um, downpipes, not tuned. All I have is uh, equal length mid pipe, uh, AWE switch path exhaust, and intakes. Um, so, really, it's not really a concern for me right now. I know this winter where I will tune the car and I will add some downpipes, I will look into uh, again the crank up keyed at that time and upgrading the crank up. I know that. That was one of the flaws when you first got the car, when you're thinking about, oh, the crank hub, the crank hub. So I think that's, it takes away from driving the car a little bit if you're really nervous about that. Luckily, I didn't think too much about that because I did have my warranty and I still have the warranty until this winter. So that's another reason why I didn't want to um, tune the car and also put a downpipe because um, nowadays BMW, from what I hear from friends that work at dealers uh, or service departments is that uh, BMW is is voiding a lot of uh, warranties uh, based on the tune, and, and the tune is something that they could kind of see. Um, if you do have any catastrophic failure, uh, they will take their time and an effort to find out if your car was tuned because to replace a motor, you're looking at 30 plus grand, if not more. And that's something that BMW does not want to foot the bill for. All right, you guys, those are the five things I did not like about my F80 M3. If you guys have some of the dislikes about your M3 and M4, let me know in the comments. If you guys have different ones that I didn't discuss today, I'll let me know in the comments because I'm kind of curious what you guys don't like about your uh, M4 or M3. On next week's episode, it's going to be the five things I love about my F80 M3. And that's going to be a lot easier to film. Um, I, I feel like a word of dislike and hate is something strong for this car. There's really nothing that I really hate about the car. But there's a lot of things that I think that BMW can approve on, which they've done on the new platform. So on next week's episode, we'll discuss the five things I love about this car. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up. It really helps my small channel grow. Um, with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much again for tuning in. And I'll see you guys on the next one.